local exhibit follows the phases of quilting history. The Texas Tech Museum showcasing the quilt's unique symbolism in family and the arts. Our Samantha Waddell has more in your look around Lubbock. Hey, okay, Samantha. Hey guys, we're here at the Museum of Texas Tech talking about the legacy of a thousand stitches with Dr. Marion Ann Montgomery. Can you talk to us about this beautiful quilt we're sitting next to? Absolutely. This quilt is called Wheel to Fortune, and it has over 2,700 pieces in it. It was all hand-pieced, so it was done probably before the family had a sewing machine in the household. It was made in the 1870s, and in mm. fact, um, it was. Uh, we don't know who originally made it. We know it was made in the Hansen, Hassan, Stinson, or Boone family, and it was given to... Um, Catherine Wilcox Stinson when she married Henry Allen Boone on March 12th of 1913. By that point, this quilt was already a family heirloom. What's interesting is the incredible stitching and the incredible work on this, as well as the strong graphic aspect of this quilt. Um, and we're thrilled to have it. It was given to us by Catherine Stinson Boone, who it received it as a wedding gift, and we're just thrilled to have it here at the museum. It's one of 45 quilts that will be on exhibit until the middle of May. I know we were speaking earlier, you have, all of these are from different eras. They all have a different history and a different story. And I know you've mentioned that this one's from 1913 or, you know, probably even earlier than that. Can you talk about why having these is so important for us to learn? It's very important to have these quilts because in many, in many instances, this is the only thing that survives of the legacy of the woman who made it. And there, although there are male quilters right now in, in America, and there were certainly male quilters before, Everything in this room is represented by women that made these quilts, and we're just thrilled to be able to put their stories on our wall. Coming up on Look Around Lubbock, we'll talk about more of the quilts that you can find on Legacy of a Thousand Stitches. Samantha Waddell has your Look Around Lubbock. Hey, Samantha. Hey guys, we're here at the Museum of Texas Tech talking about Legacy of a Thousand Stitches. I'm joined by Dr. Montgomery. Can you talk to us about this beautiful quilt? I'd be happy to. This is one of my favorites. It's a, it's a cattle brand quilt, and actually all of the quilts in here are special treasures of the museum. I sort of feel like I've gotten my special treasures out to share with the world, and I hope that they'll come see it. This is one that was made in the 60s, so the backing is actually a double knit fabric. You know, we all had those horrible double knit polyester things, and they're very difficult to sew with. So this quilt is um, not actually quilted, but it's tied. You can see these little red strings here. It's tied in place. And it is embroidered with um, these wonderful um, cattle brands. So here we have the running W for the King Ranch in South Texas, and we have the XIT Ranch represented here. Um, it's a great sort of um, history of cattle branding in, in West Texas, and actually in the state of Texas. And it's made out of men's suiting fabrics. And so um, possibly they were fabrics that came from like a tailor's swatch book or a salesman's swatch book, because they're all about the same size. But they're done in the style of the sugans, the wool sugans that the cowboys would have had with with them out on the ranch. This is a little smaller than a typical sugan. They're usually a little bit longer, more close, closer to um, five and a half to six feet long, but so also very narrow, so they could be rolled up on, uh, on the pack of the horse. So um, kind of an interesting quilt, and one that not very many people have had a chance to see. It's not the only one like it out there. There are others, but this is the one that's in our collection, and it's a special treasure to the people of Texas here. It's really a historical kind of document to show you what has been going on in West Texas in different kind of cattle ranches and stuff like that that have existed that we can now see in a, on a quilt. And for, in many cases that ended up sort of being the logo of that particular um, company or that particular ranch. And so it's kind of interesting to look at early logos that way and think about that compared to the logos we see in today and all of the other branding we have. A lot of it kind of, our history is showing us that we kind of repeat ourselves a couple times. History is a fascinating thing, and the stories behind all of these quilts are historical, fas fascinating historical stories. So it's fun to share them. I know you were speaking on this closes it in May on Mother's Day. Actually, it closes on the 15th of May. It's the week after Mother's Day, and we have many programs planned, which are all listed on the museum's website, so we hope people will come out and attend them. Almost all of them are free. And, and also, in a later segment, let's talk about the Quilt Documentation Day we're going to do, where families can bring their quilts to the museum, and we'll talk to them about them and tell them about them. Great. Coming up on Look Around Lubbock, we'll talk about more quilts and legacy of a thousand stitches. Guys? Thank you very much, Samantha. Cool exhibit. On to our celebrity birth. Hey, guys. We're here with Dr. Montgomery. Can you tell us about this quilt and why it's so unique to Lubbock? 
it is a very important quilt to us because it is the first quilt to come into the collection made by women with Hispanic surnames. And it had an interesting um, trip coming to us because I didn't know about this quilt a year ago. In, in August, a friend of mine from Connecticut, a quilt, a quilt historian, Sue Reich, um, emailed me and said, hey, I have this quilt from Lubbock. Are you interested in having it? And it has Hispanic surnames on it. And I said, well, I'd love to see it. So we made plans to see this quilt when um, we both were together in Indianapolis for the American Quilt Study Group's annual seminar. And I loved it immediately and brought it back, but neither one of us knew anything about it other than that it had a lot of names on it and had the date of 1988 on it. It also had has the name of the church, Iglesia Batista Templo. And so when I got back to Lubbock, I looked up the church, found it online, started corresponding with the, the woman who is the secretary there, because we all know the church secretary knows everything about yes. the church. Well, she was fairly new and didn't know the story of this, but began contacting women. And then I didn't hear from her. And we were getting close to having to do the exhibition. And so I thought, well, at least let's get a photograph of the church. So I went out and got a photograph of the church. And as I was going back to my car, Car, the facilities, the man who was handling the facilities stepped out and said, so are we going to be on the news? And I said, well, I don't think so. I'm, this is for a quilt exhibit. And he said, well, why don't you come over and meet my wife? She does some quilting. Well, as it turned out, his wife, Miss Sanchez, is represented on this quilt. She knew about it and she helped me gather together women that are still alive, there are over 13 of them, and they gathered one day in December. I took their picture, which we have on exhibit, and um, they told me about the story of the quilt. And it was to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Women's Missionary Union, which is part of the Baptist Church's nationwide union. There are many churches like across the country that made quilts like this. When we were documenting the names on this, one of my volunteers, Angela Blackwell, was reading the names. Another one looked over, Carolyn Sowell, and she said, well, we made one like this in Midland. So there's this great story with it. We're thrilled to have a quilt that represents our Hispanic community and we're so thrilled that so many of them have come out to see it. Coming up on Look Around Lubbock, we'll tell you more about other quilts you can find at this exhibit. Guys? Thank you much, Samantha. Hey guys, we're here at Legacy of a Thousand Stitches. Dr. Montgomery, can you tell me why this quilt has such a unique story? It was made in Matador, Texas by a woman who actually didn't, she made the top, didn't finish quilting it. Her sister quilted it and then she used flour sack fabric on the back that she had dyed, uh, flour sack from the light crust uh, dough, fa uh, the dough company. And um, it came to the museum with a history of having a jinx that no one in the family had ever been allowed to sleep under this quilt. And I don't really put much stock in that sort of thing, but this quilt really has an interesting life and an interesting attitude because we store all of our objects in a certain place. We know where they are on our database. We went to look for this quilt. We had seen it in 2014 and in the inventory, went for it for the show. Couldn't find it. It wasn't where it was supposed to be. We, three of us looked, my two in interns and I looked. Couldn't find it. Well, I went away to a festival. They um, all, uh, the two of them stayed behind. They looked the next day. They could not find it where it was supposed to be, nor in any of the bins on the other side. Yeah, mistakes are made. We just couldn't find it anywhere. So finally on Friday, the third day, one of our interns, Taylor Ernst, the wife of Matt Ernst on your, on your channel, went and found it exactly where it was supposed to be and where all of us had been looking. So that was our first, our first interaction with this jinxed quilt. Then we laid all of the quilts up on the wall so that we could look at the colors. We folded them all up, sent them to registration so they'd be ready for the exhibit. That's where it was supposed to be, across the museum, like a thousand square feet away from where it ended up being found. And the girls came back one day and they said, hey, we rolled up Devil's Highway. And I said, but why? It's in the show. Well, what's it doing over in collection storage and not in the registrar's office? So, I mean, this quilt really has a mind of its own. We almost were gonna put a nail in it to make sure it stayed on the wall, but uh, we thought that wouldn't be the, the sort of thing we should do. But this story about this quilt and others are all featured in our exhibition catalog called Legacies, Legacies Legacy of a Thousand Stitches. And um, it's for sale in our museum store. If you can't come to the museum to buy one, the one will be shipped to you um, well, if you pay postage. And it has all of the quilts in the show. So they're great color photographs of every quilt, pho photographed by our fabulous photographer, Bill Mueller, um, plus over 50 more quilts that we didn't have room for on the wall. So the images the of the quilt makers where we knew them are in this book, as well as the great stories behind them. And so we're just hoping this quilt enjoys its time here. We certainly love having Having it. And we'd love to know more about the family, the Vaughn family from Matador, Texas, where this was made and hope that maybe through this exhibition they'll contact us. Coming up on Look Around Lubbock, we'll tell you more about other quilts and the events that are coming up. 
Hey guys, we're at the Museum of Texas Tech talking with Dr. Montgomery about Legacy of a Thousand Stitches. Can you talk to me about this this quilt right behind you? This quilt is Mary Face's Morning Housework, which is a wonderful sort of witty look at what housework is for women today and how Mary would handle it. It's done by Ellie Krennic, who is really in many ways the mother of the studio art quilt mill movement in West Texas. She continues to work and is continuing to produce work, and we're just so thrilled that she donated this to us. It shows her use of the West Texas landscape and her wit. Um, what's interesting also is that this exhibition features not only older quilts, but things that are still being made, which we think um, is very important. Quilting today is a multi-billion dollar industry, which people forget. They think it was only done by their grandmothers, but it's today being done by lots of young people all across the country of the United States, but also internationally. And um, we are thrilled to be able to represent the new things as well as the old things. Another really, really fabulous quilt is this one called Color Your World with Gratitude, which in many ways is um, it's a color wheel done uh, it's a study of color done with a color wheel the quilt artist is a friend of Ellie Krennick's who made um, more Mary Faces Morning Housework this quilter is Linda Fisher who is has been teaching people to quilt out here in West Texas in a very gracious and loving way for years and in fact will be teaching a whole class to um, people about starting quilting how to do small wall hangings and that will start this Saturday at Raw Raws the quilt shop in town at one o'clock this Saturday also, I will be leading a tour of this exhibition um, beginning at 10, 10.30 in the morning upstairs in the climb room. We'll sit down and look at all the quilts. We'll stay here till about noon and that's free. It's called Come and See. So we hope people will come out for that. This piece shows Linda's interesting use of color as well as her artistic design. The, um, the trees here were based on a wire uh, sculpture she saw in a dining, in a restaurant at some place here in West Texas. So it's, it's a beautiful piece and her brother is using this on his wines out of Waco. He has a new winery. Things aren't ready for sale yet, but this is going to be his label on his wine bottle, which is kind of fun to see a quilt used that way. Just all kind of runs in the family. Everybody gets a little piece of it. And I know this is a newer quilt, so not all of the quilts in your exhibit are older and have, you know, a very unique history to them. Some of them are new and are creating their history. They are, and it's really lovely because we have the opportunity to learn from the artist what she was thinking. And we have her picture, we know her story, where so many of these other quilts that are beautiful works of art, we just wish we knew more about the women. So, yes, we're lucky to have these new ones. And actually, the first quilt to come into the collection came in about 10 years after it was made. It's a double wedding ring from the 40s, and, uh, and it came in shortly after it was made. So it's, it's our precedent to take the new as well as the older pieces. How are these quilted, these quilts selected for this exhibit? I wanted to show various aspects of quilting from log cabin patterns to signature quilts to just great strong graphic quilts. And so these were ones that had to have good graphic quality. They had to be in good condition. And then if they had a story with them, that was even better. So we've enjoyed talking about the makers as we can. Hey guys, we're at the Museum of Texas Tech talking about Legacy of a Thousand Stitches. What is this quilt? Because the names, I mean, they're all personally in here. Can you talk to us about it? I can. Uh, and this is the quilt that you, Samantha, really liked the best in the exhibition. It was made during the Depression era, and it was, um, the signatures are from women across Lubbock. It's dated, and it has Lubbock 33 on it. But then it has things like uh, 2119 Avenue M. I don't know what that stands for. I really don't know how these women are related. We have several signature quilts in the collection. This is the one that we have from Lubbock and I'm hoping that there will be people that will come through and see this exhibition and tell us some story or know some of the people that are on this quilt. This other quilt that's over here is, a, is interesting because it's a very early um, machine-made quilt. It's from the 1860s and the sewing machine was only invented really in the 1850s and so to have all this applique work done with a chain stitch by a sewing machine is really incredible and that's why this quilt is on the wall because it's such an interesting use of technology so early on. We have 45 quilts on exhibit here which we hope people will come to see. The museum is open Mondays, uh, Tuesdays, not Mondays at all, Tuesdays through Saturday 10 to 5 and Sundays 1 to 5. Monday we have to have time to sort of freshen things and, and fix things. We have a come and see program which will be tomorrow Saturday morning at 10 30 until noon upstairs um, in the in the climb room. You just come in the front door where I will be talking about the quilt makers and I will also then lead a tour of the exhibition. Um, we have basic quilting starting tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock at Raw Raw's um, quilting shop down on 82nd. Linda Fisher will be teaching that. It's a several 
uh, several session program. And then Katie Pasquini Massapist, an incredibly well-known international quilt artist from New Mexico, is coming to do a free trunk show Thursday night, February the 11th, which we hope people will come to. The exhibition catalog features 101 of the quilts from the museum's collection. The 50-some that are not on exhibit, including our most important Susan Robb Confederate quilt, will be shown at a bed turning on April the 7th, where you can come in. We'll lay out all the quilts that aren't on exhibit, and we'll talk about each one of them. Registration is required. There's a tiny fee for that. And then we will be helping people of Lubbock document the quilts that they've inherited through their family on quilt documentation days on April the 9th and May the 14th. You can bring four quilts in, and we'll tell you all about them, everything except their value. So it'll be kind of like an antique road show, but not with the value. If you would like to come and look at these quilts and see all of their great stories, admission is free. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Samantha. A Broadway musical.